In 2009, the biggest selling album in the world was not by Beyonce or Lady Gaga. It wasn't by Kings of Leon or U2. It was by an unknown, unemployed, lonely woman from Scotland. But what happened to the woman behind the most incredible success story of our time? I get embarrassed. <laughs> what about your achievements? Yeah, I get embarrassed. I mean, lovely special. Over three months, I was given unprecedented access into the life of the world's most unlikely superstar. Well, look, can we start that for a bit? <sighs> I'm in a bad morning. <laughs> she went into a very, very bad place for a while. Did you feel guilty? I did for a while. I didn't know what the right decision was. I didn't know whether we did a good thing or a bad thing. I wanted to find out if the person that first appeared on our screens two years ago was still living the dream. Thank you all very much. Everything amazing has happened because of you. Would you say the dream was what you were expecting? Well, the dream is not a nightmare. Or if some people were simply not made for fame and fortune. People enjoy the negative side rather than looking for the positives, because there's a lot of positives to Susan. I've always got that insecurity that's all going to go away. Do you find yourself getting lonely, Susan? Yeah. So you feel it sometimes at night. I was surprised to find one of the world's most successful recording artists still living in the same council house she grew up in. Here you come. Welcome to Dracula's castle. <laughs> Catch you doing the washing up? More or less, yeah. Woman's words never done, you know. This is, the place is like a, a tip just now. You have to make, make apologies, you know. Would you say you're quite house proud, then? Well, I'm not bad. <laughs> make a bit of a mess like everybody else, you know. Obviously, in the last couple of years, you've made yourself quite a good fortune. <laughs> Some people might assume that you've gone off to live in a castle somewhere. That's just their imaginations, heaven's sake. <laughs> People have got good imaginations, haven't they? <laughs> if you want to keep yourself grounded, you just don't get ideas above your station. <laughs> Who wants to live in a castle anyway? It's drafty. <laughs> Susan lives on her own, but at one time shared the house with her parents, three sisters and four brothers. Ten people sharing one bathroom. That, was that, 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 that used to be fighting in the morning, I can assure you. Especially when you were getting ready to go to your work. <laughs> you know? This used to be the girls' room in here. So it was maybe three of us in the one bed. And I had all my stuff, all my stuff toys in the bed as well. Bruno, my big bear and everything. So it must have been must have been something for the, the rest of them. <laughs> so three of you used to share one bed? Yeah, that's right. And that was the laddies' room in there. The boys' room? The boys' room, mm-hmm. How many boys shared this room? No, well, there was Jared, Joe, John and James, so it was four of them. And this was the boss, my mum and dad. Sorry it's a bit of a mess just now because, you know, I've no, not had a chance to clean it yet. It's lived in. <laughs> there you go. It's a wee bit better, isn't it? OK, Dory, there you go. Who's that on the bed? Oh, it's husband. <laughs> Here you are, son. Have a good look at that. It's the nearest thing I'll ever get to you. And there you go. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> well, I'm never too old. I'm never too old, you know. I'm never too old. Never too old for what, Susan? I'm never too old. I can dream, but don't touch. <laughs> That's what keeps you alive, isn't it? <laughs> there you go. Susan has lived her whole life in a small town between Edinburgh and Glasgow in central Scotland. Before
before she appeared on Britain's Got Talent, Susan was seen as a reclusive eccentric on the fringes of the community. But at this year's Town Gala Day, the people of Blackburn have made Susan their guest of honour. As a village, we would like to thank you for putting Blackburn on the map and encouraging both young and old that you should never give up on your dreams. Thank you. Well, thank you all very much. I'm a fair chuffed. <laughs> and uh, I hope to continue to uh, do your proud. I'm very touched. Thank you. Well, they'll do the wiggle of what? Susan, I have a Subo tattoo on my leg. <laughs> strange that someone would get a tattoo of your name on their leg. Whatever turns them on. <laughs> Whatever turns them on. Most of the people you're seeing, you're waving. Most of them are new ones, but most of them I do know, yeah, because I grew up with most of them. So there you are, extra special, eh? Although cherished now for helping to put Blackburn on the map, Susan used to be regularly picked on by the town's children. All the weird ones, like the young teenager ones, they used to egg her windies and all that, and be really, really horrible and say horrible things to her, but they've all changed. They're all at door asking for autographs and stuff, eh? So I think they've all got a bit of respect for her now. Susan was starved of oxygen at birth and suffered brain damage. I wanted to know how this affected her childhood. There are still a lot of stories that you were bullied. I was bullied school. at school, yeah. You were bullied at because school? Because I had a slight disability and I was a bit slow. You know, it hasn't really scarred me that much, you know. Twitch, twitch. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know has it twitched me that much? <laughs> you say you, you got bullied. Just how bad did the bullying get? It was all psychological stuff, you know. The kids don't know they've been... Some kids don't know they've been cruel, some kids do, and they get a kick out of it. And they could make me scream and bawl, and that, that made some of them... Whoa, whoa, let's make a scream and bawl, you know, because it was hyperactive. You, you say that it was mostly psychological, but it did actually get physical. It got physical as well. There was a lady at school who used to stub out cigarettes on me, stuff like that, you know? And just stub out cigarettes on you? Yeah, just, you know, and bash me about and stuff like that until one day I got fed up with her and gave her a good sound pacing. <laughs> you, you fought back? I, I, I could fight back when I needed to, you know? So, 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 so impression. I gave the impression I couldn't fight back. I, I could fight back when I needed to. What did you do when you fought back? Give him the Glasgow head. <laughs> did you really? She had nice long hair, this lassie. So I just grabbed the hair and just put her down. <laughs> How did you put her down? Easy. <laughs> the hair. And she didn't burn you with cigarettes after that? She didn't bother me after that, no. When I next met up with Susan, I got my first sense of just how much her world had changed. For most of her adult life, she was unemployed, surviving on benefits. Now, accompanied by her manager, Andy Stevens, she was having a meeting about her new album with one of the most influential people in showbiz. Hi, Mr. Carl, how you doing? Hello. Hello. Hi, Mr. Carl. Simon, how are you? <laughs> yeah, not so bad. Do I not get a kiss? <laughs> well, come on then. Can I get you a cuddle? Whatever you want. Yeah, beautiful. I've been waiting for this for ages. <laughs> how are you? Not so bad. Nice to see you. Nice to see you, you too. Are you behaving yourself? Off and on. That means no. <laughs> Oh. That would be really nice. Nice to see you. How are you? Awesome. Okay. Yeah, OK. Is this OK? For yeah, me? fine. Whatever you want. Thanks. Yeah. Cheers. Where's good for you, sweetheart? Well, whatever. I said, whatever you want. 
Okay, no problem. <laughs> I don't want to show you. I don't want to. Why are you being all shy with me? <laughs> because I'm a shy person. You don't believe that. I don't believe that. <laughs> <laughs> Has Susan heard the tracks we heard in the meeting last week? I don't, I don't think so. Unless the early stuff. You know when I said you a note last week and I said I like what I've heard? Mm -hmm. Have you heard those songs, those rough mixes? I have a bit, yeah. You have? Mm -hmm. would, are you happy? I could do better, but I'm happy in the... Really? Happy, yeah. I always try to do my best. No, I know. I think you sounded great on the record. Thank you. Very smoky, very jazzy, isn't it? Kind of lounge music stuff, isn't it? Do you think it has the same impact as Crime Era? Yeah. So we discussed on Unshaped Melody, it didn't quite feel raw enough. Every time I've recorded this song, it's at the number one. Every time. And it feels... I'll cross my, I'll cross my fingers. So It's really good, I'm excited about it. But you enjoying it? I enjoy working for you. You don't work for me. Yes, I do. I work for you. No, you don't. Oh, excuse me. You're the boss. <laughs> this, that's, that's the deal. I thought you were. No, you're the boss now. You didn't read your contract. Come on, boss. Oh, don't be silly. That's true. Don't be silly. Yeah. Nice to see you, sweetheart. You're lovely. Good to see you, after appearing on Britain's Got Talent, Susan struggled to cope with the instant fame. I was curious if Simon ever had any doubt about giving her a record deal. It's quite well documented that she suffered from brain damage as a, as a child and it has affected her for the rest of her life. Has that been a factor uh, as an artist that you guys look after? Well, you know, it's, it's what I said before, it's a responsibility. Um, you have that with any artist you work with. Um, uh, I mean, uh, always what we've tried to do on our shows is, is to try and have a sort of an openness and, and the idea that we couldn't work with her because of what happened in her past and that she didn't have her own viewpoint or she didn't have the right to change her life for the better, to me, was actually disgusting. I told her that this is, you know, going to be quite stressful at times because that's what happens when you make records. But it's what she wanted to do. I got a lot of, lot of stick uh, after the show um, when um, uh, she, you know, found it very, very difficult to deal with the fact she didn't win and went into a very, very bad place for a while. And at the time, um, you know, there were a lot of people who were very critical about the show. And did you feel guilty? I did for a while. I didn't know what the right decision was. I didn't know whether we did a good thing or a bad thing. And I spent a lot of time thinking about what was the right thing, wrong thing. And I actually just went with my gut instinct, which was, I'm not going to patronise this person. So uh, I, I, I do believe we've made the right decision. You know, when she's happy, it makes me happy. She has her down days, uh, but I think she would have had her down days anyway. I wanted to find out how Susan was coping with her new life and whether fame had actually made her happy. She'll come home, she closes the door. There's nobody there to welcome her. Do you find yourself getting lonely, Susan? So you feel it sometimes at night, you know. Two years ago, Susan Boyle was unemployed and unknown. She is now one of the most recognisable people on the planet. I wanted to find out how she was coping with her new life as an international superstar. I travelled to Shanghai, where Susan had been invited to perform at the finals of China's Got Talent.
Attending press conferences in foreign countries is a far cry from her secluded life before fame. Manager Andy tries to keep the media requests to a minimum, especially the ones in Chinese. This comes first. No, this first, and then that. Okay. Wo lai le. So you say Chinese got talent, wo lai le. And then shi hao jian. Go. Oh my god. Look at me. Let's try it. Let's give it a couple of times. Wo lai le. Jesus Christ. How do I get the feeling of being prompted? Hello, Susan. I'm Yuki. Hi. How are you doing? I'm going to interview you and I'm going to ask you some simple questions. Oh, no, no, no. Whoa, stop, stop, stop. Hang on, Rebecca. Now we've got questions. No, we're not doing an interview. We're just just doing the trail in iDense for the show tomorrow. China's got talent, more like that. Very good. Shang Xing Shang Xing Shang Xing Shang Xing <laughs> the final of China's Got Talent is predicted to be the world's highest rated television show of the year with over half a billion viewers. Rows and flows of angel Ice cream castles in the Despite her global success, Susan has played very few live concerts, and this stadium is far larger than anywhere she has performed before. It's just a question of building confidence and gaining that experience so that she's not daunted by any of this stuff in the future. Just to keep dropping these in along the way. Because when she comes to tour on her own account, I don't want her to go out there and be phased by anything. I just think she, whether even if things go wrong, you know, the ability to be able to cover it up or bust time and make time until the technicians sort it out or whatever it might be. It's all just experience. Susan, what's going through your mind when you're looking around this stadium? So you see the scale of it for a start. If this is what it's like for me, what's it going to be like for the contestants? I just hope they can cope. So you want a dance here? I think I can't dance, thank you. There you go. Oh, I'm all dead. That wasn't long. <laughs> schedule allows for Susan to spend a few hours exploring the city. Nice, eh? Hey, how go for you? Yeah, oh, yeah. Very nice. Am I good at this? This is it. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh. Fire, if nothing else. With the performance approaching, thousands of fans head for the Shanghai People's Stadium. Before other large performances, Susan has been known to lose her temper under pressure. Andy has dealt with a number of flare-ups in the past. It's the big night, Andy. Who's more nervous, you or Susan? Oh, me, probably. That's just the way I am. She's all right. She gets nervous, but... Much, yeah. The only nervous bit is getting her to the stage. Once she's up there, she's fine. She just, bang, we're off. But it's all the elements which go around it, you know. So there was this reputation about your your uh, tempo. Is that was it true? Well, I'm ashamed to admit it. Yes, but uh, I'm going to be a bit older now and get more used to it. So there's no really need, real need for me to flare up as much. You know, you learn how to control, how to control things. You know. You don't flare up as much because you get a lot done by being calm. You get nothing done by being shouting and bone. 
and that was what you were known for a bit, wasn't it? I suppose in the olden days. Uh, yeah, was I was, that, you, I was did you, the, the Miss Piggy temper, yeah. <laughs> Back in Blackburn, Susan was given free drinks for getting up and singing karaoke in local pubs. I was curious what the perks were for a gig like this. With that many viewers, this is obviously a job worth doing. Oh, very it's, much uh, so, yeah, it's of course. Very lucrative, but this it, kind of work. It's, it's, it's not so much the lucrative, it's the fact that it, you know, this is a, a, a not often played part of the world. You're saying it's not just about the money, but for this, I mean, vaguely, can I ask to the nearest five figures, just uh, how much does a job like this earn, Susan? Uh, well, it's in six figures, let's put it that way. Is that the high end six figures or the low end? <laughs> I'm not telling you guys. Tax man might be watching. <laughs> After the extraordinary high of performing in front of such a huge audience, I wondered what the come down would be like. A week after the trip to China, I found Susan visiting an old school friend at a pub near her hometown. How's, how's she behaving herself? She's actually looking at it. Lorraine has witnessed Susan's highs and lows throughout her life. So you've seen a few of Susan's boiling moments, right? Yes. <laughs> but I believe if you care about somebody and they're a friend, you take them in the good and the bad. Eh, Susan? Come in. <laughs> Is that right? Eat. Hey, pops. As one of only a few close friends, Lorraine knows better than anyone how Susan is coping with her new lifestyle. When, when do the low moments <laughs> come for Susan? Well, I would say our lowest moments uh, for Susan is when, when she returns from travelling, when she's been in New York or Shanghai. She'll come home, she closes the door. There's nobody there to welcome her. It's a silence. And that's a fear for Susan. Autumn leaves 
on the frozen souls Hungry hands turning soft and old Susan has only ever lived with members of her family, all of whom have either moved away or died. Read out what's on it. It's a loving memory of our dear mum and dad, Pat and Brady Boyle, always in our hearts of their loving family. Quite nice, really, eh? Have a wee sit down. Do you find yourself getting lonely, Susan? Yeah. That would be a lie to say otherwise. I was often saying this to Andy, how lonely I am and everything, you know. I miss my mum and dad, I miss the family around about, but they come in, they do phone, you know, so they're not entirely lonely, you know. So you feel it sometimes at night, you know. There's not a lot you can do about that, just hope that the job you got, you've got wins you new friends, you know, and uh, maybe one day, that, that vital person. What do you think your vital person would be like? He would have to be kind, loving. Maybe somebody who could keep me calm. I could maybe keep him calm. I do really special. I take a while to get to know people, you know, forming relationships and friendships and things. So I think probably that side that would have to be extra special. You know, as I say, there's, there's plenty of time. Plenty of time. What I was about to learn was that Susan's greatest fear was losing the one big passion she already had. Can we stop that for a bit? Not happy with that, not happy with that. Well, the dream is not a nightmare, and I don't want it to end. Even with the funds to live anywhere in the world, Susan Boyle has decided to remain rooted in her hometown of Blackburn. But she has allowed herself some extra space in the form of a new house on the other side of town. It's the posh house. Somebody dubbed it the posh house. I think I did when I was getting, getting it done out. So there it is. The posh house. <laughs> Reluctant to move out of her family's old council house, Susan uses her posh house mostly for storing memorabilia. I got this a couple of months ago from Sony. That was worldwide sales. That's a lot of records, isn't it? I get embarrassed. <laughs> what about your achievements? Yeah, I get embarrassed. I mean, I'm nobody special. I'm just an ordinary person, you know? And that was from America. It says, presented to Susan Boyle in commemoration of US sales of I Dreamed a Dream. You can tell it was two years ago, eh? <laughs> An excess of 400,000 units. Is that, that's actually not 400,000, is it? I think that's four million, actually. You I know? need my glasses, I need my glasses. Is that you being modest again? Yeah, I'm being modest again, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Despite music being her big passion in life, Susan plays down her success. She was the first female artist ever to have two albums reach number one in both the UK and US within a year. The only other act to achieve this was the Beatles. Hi, how are you doing? Oh. I'm here. You're at home. <laughs> how are you? I'm the bad ten. I'm the bad Voice coach Evie Burnett is helping preparations for the final studio sessions of Susan's third album. So, I'm sort of a how's, you do a, how's your voice? Not bad, but I have to have a few lessons because I'm a bit husky if I've been not well. Okay, so we need to do a bit of a warm up, get ourselves back in form. Mm -hmm. Return, return. Break. Now smile a little less. 
told last word. And the word. What do you want? Tea? Hi. Got the tea, please. Badly, don't worry about it. I didn't know you could play the piano. See, full of surprises, me and I. <laughs> I don't think people realise how musical you are. I don't think people. That's very basic because I'm just getting lessons no, just now. But I don't think people realise that you like know about keys and you know about because you know when we do the songs and you I write can hear it. If it, if it sounds okay and, I, and my voice sort of matches up with it, but there's a lot I can polish off because I'm not a prof I'm not a full professional or anything like that. Susan. I I'm think you're about as professional as anybody gets now. I think you're... I, I think, can't see people like you! <laughs> I think telling me that you're not professional last I've been year honest, I've been honest. would have worked, but now you're professional. Oh, well. Professional means you earn money from singing. Have you ever earned any money from singing? I think I probably have, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Does Susan not consider herself to be a professional then? Is that, is that what I'm understanding? Susan's constantly said to me that, you know, I'd like to be a professional <laughs> singer, when she wasn't, obviously, when she'd newly done, started Britain's Got Talent and we started working together, she said, I'd love to be a professional singer. And it took her a long time to realise that actually she is one. And now she's about as professional a singer as you get. You know, she's made it big. And I think she sort of has to pinch herself to realise it. So I keep having to remind her. Since childhood, Susan has dreamed that one day she would have a job as a singer. I was invited to sit in on one of her recording sessions in London. Well, I mean, I don't know how I'm going to do that. Yep, loads of holes away. Getting good, eh? How do you do it? How are you? I'm OK. Yeah, you're right. I'm fine, thanks, eh? Come on. No problems. Hiya. Hiya, you're right. Uh -huh. I don't know, it sounds good. It sounds like you're giving it everything, but it just needs a little bit more control. But, uh -huh. yeah, take a seat. Let's have a listen through. It's just this next line here. Oh, no. Do you watch that, do you? Just the me. It's not even the return. It's yeah. all over the place yeah, there, it's isn't right, it? It's all right. Producer Steve Mack was present when Susan made her first tentative steps to becoming a professional. When Susan came in to record, what, what, what was it like? It was, just, it was just too much. I mean, I remember that we had a, a room full of people. There was about ten. There was about ten people all waiting there. So I went out and said, you know, what time Susan going to get here? And he said, oh, she's here. But she's round the corner. She's back round by the water cooler. I was like, okay. So I walked round the corner and she's standing there shaking just on her own in this, in this corner. She just didn't know what to do, didn't want to, you know, she, I, I can't do this, I can't, I've just felt for her so much. If the voice is warm enough, then we should do that. But I think you should have a go at singing it all the way through anyway, okay. just to warm up into it. Okay, so. let's do it. Okay. So this is the place of work. Mm-hmm. Does it feel like your second home? It is a bit, yeah, it's good. Sort of my bee bubble. I like that. Two, three, four. Return, return to me. Cool. Not happy with that. Not cool, happy yeah, with no, that. No, no, that's fine. Return. Can we stop that for a bit? Yeah, yeah no worries. Can we no stop worries. that? Return. Yeah, let, let me count it's your timing there. It's, it's an extra like, little beat, yeah, it's, it's a rail there it's or timing something. There. Okay. Return. One, one, one Tune slightly in. later. Don't worry. And again. I'm having a bad morning. <laughs> no, 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 it's, it's sounding good. How is Susan different from other artists that you've worked with? She's all about emotion, she's all about understanding the song. Susan's one of the first that I work with that if she doesn't get the story, well, if she doesn't connect with it, it doesn't sound very good. But if she does, then it's, it's amazing. You know, when, she's, when she sounds though she's almost in tears on it, it's not fake, she is almost in tears when she's giving the performance. You're not just saying that because this is your record. <laughs> no, I'm not just saying that because this is my record. Forever, if I lost everything I knew forever, 
If this war should break in two forever, I will wait till you return. Return. I'll have some of that. Lovely jubbly. Take, take, uh, yeah, take two minutes, and then we'll okay. come back to that. Lovely. So when you come in. Do you get yourself in a particular frame of mind? You have to be in the zone. If you're not in the zone, you can't work effectively. So if you've had a bit of a bad day, you just got to leave that at the door. Right, so even if you don't feel like it, you have That's to it. get yourself into yeah, it. Yeah, exactly, yeah, because you, you're providing a kind of service to the public, aren't you? You're producing a product for the public, for their entertainment. So it's not, you can't come in here and say, I'm not in the mood for this, I'm not doing it. You, you can't do it. You just can't do it because you'd be cheating your public. Not only that, you'd be letting yourself down as well. Because this is why I went through Britain's Got Talent and stuff like that, so they could do stuff like this. So you'd be letting yourself down, really. Having spent much of her life unemployed, Susan takes her job very seriously. But having gone from benefits to earning millions, I was surprised she wasn't tempted to treat herself more. I do go shopping quite a lot. I should have, I should have, I should have shares in M&S by now. What, you just go shopping at the M&S when you come to London? Yeah, it's handy for clothes, isn't it? <laughs> but there's so many designer shops, you're not interested in going out and spending your winnings. Oh, don't be silly. No, she's not. Do it within the budget. I'd have to persuade Susan to go and buy a jar of peanuts. She won't spend any money on herself. I wish she would. Indulge herself a bit more. Enjoy it. I sensed that Susan's reluctance to enjoy the trappings of her success was connected to the fear of one day losing it. You've experienced, effectively, the dream that so many people have. Would you say that uh, the dream was what you were expecting? It would be. Well, the dream is not a nightmare. It's pleasant, and I don't want it to end. Every artist is always paranoid about when it's thinking. No sooner they made it, the very next thing they worry about is when it's going to go away. <laughs> and this is no exception to that. I understand that. I really understand it, but you, you can only do what you can do. And, and, and well, try everybody, make, right, well right. Andy, everybody has a sell-by date, but when that date comes, they'll let you know. Yeah, but you know, <laughs> until then, I'm just going to enjoy it. Yeah, <laughs> enjoy I the hope, moment. I hope so. Uh, you enjoy the moment. We've discussed that many times, and I really hope you do. I mean, the only person who can really end this all is the person themselves, and uh, I don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> what I wanted to know was why holding on to success meant so much. Everything amazing has happened because of you. Thank you so much. You never know what effect you're having on other people until they tell you. Perhaps more than her singing, it's Susan Boyle's story that has struck a chord with people around the world. The miraculous rags to riches tale has prompted theatre producers in Glasgow to write a musical about her life. All right, Andy. No problems. Susan and her manager are meeting with the writers. So this is a chance for you to, to find out how they plan to do the musical of your life. It's quite exciting. Well, work. I'll tell you something about the shortest musical. <laughs> I'm not half hardly lived, for God's sake. Susan will be played by actress Elaine C. Smith. Hey, you darling. How you doing? Oh, darling, how are you? Hello, nice to see you. Actually, I feel like I am you. I've been in your head for the last oh, yeah, time. Oh, wait, I'm terrible. <laughs> <laughs> She's me. <laughs> We're opening next Can March. Right, I've got a <laughs> the guys who've been working on the script now for, I can't think how long October now. Started. It's, yeah. It goes way back before Christmas when we just started yeah. developing and looking at music and looking at the bits of, of your story that you know we tell and how we would structure it. We know anybody in the world could go and do a musical about Susan Boyle, but they're not doing the one that Susan's a part of. So it's really important to us that 
I don't mean that we get a sugary, everything's perfect in the world of Susan Boyle nobody story. Is. Well, nobody <laughs> is. And that actually, what people relate to yeah. uh, is, is that you are of them, you are like everyone else, and also you dream the dreams of everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, and seeing w what that did, when you sung like that, it was about everybody's dreams, and that's a great connection. So... The musical will cover the harsher points of her life, including the close relationship with her mother, who didn't live to see Susan's dream come true. Oh, excuse me. What did you make of uh, Susan's reaction to that? Well, it's quite, it's quite frightening, actually. It's uh, to the most important thing for all of us involved is that we honour her story. The thing that makes her story magical is that it, it isn't sugary and it isn't bland. That it actually is of real stuff and real life and real pain. <laughs> There's a somebody I'm longing to see I hope that he turns out to be Fame and fortune have not made Susan's life a fairy tale. Despite her success, she is still lonely and troubled. But her story has touched millions of people all over the world. Wherever she goes, she receives an astonishing amount of affection from strangers. Give me a cuddle. Oh, come on, hey, this lady, I wish I had my camera. I'm crying that I don't have it. She does something so sweet to everybody globally, and the way that people react when they run into her blows my mind away. Because they just come up, they don't want to bother her, they just want to say, you know, you make a difference to me. That's, that's my house, please come in for a drink, a coffee yeah, or something, it. would you like to? Well, maybe sometime. <laughs> In just two years, Susan has built up an incredibly devoted fan base. These people have travelled from all over America for the opportunity to spend a few minutes with her. I am from Kerrville, Texas, and I'm here to see Susan Boyle. I love her. She's good. She has a, gl a glow of goodness in her countenance. That yeah. She radiates goodness. That's something that we're drawn to. See you too. As they say in the South, you're so precious. <laughs> Isn't she nice? Aren't you nice? Oh, see ya. That means a lot of jerky. Oh, see ya. Oh, see ya. Where did you get the cookie from? You're a lovely lady. You really are. You okay? I think I'm going to pass out. I don't know. Are you okay? Not yet. <laughs> so many people have said the same thing. Her voice is healing. And yet it can also break your heart. Spot the, spot the difference. <laughs> Everything amazing has happened because of you. Thank you. 
It's wonderful, Miss Boyle. Aww. Thank you so much. Well, yeah. you're the reason why I started singing again. When you had the tough time that she's had for 48 years of her life, suddenly everyone's telling her, I'm genuine, they love her or they, they empathize or they connect to her, whatever it might be. This means so much. It's the best thing that could happen to her. The fact that she now has a place in society and has something to give. Sometimes you doubt your own ability, but that speaks itself there. You never know what effect you're having on other people until they tell you. It's a bit overwhelming, actually. But you see it, don't you? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm like softy. That's all right, that's okay. After watching Susan stay with her fans well over the allotted time, I finally began to realize what success has brought her. And so do you think this meet has been important for you to come and talk to them? Does it feel like it's, it, it was an important meeting? To come? Of course it's very important. If you can't talk to them, you just become a, a voice that comes on. But for you, but for you, it's important for you. Very important, yeah. Because I'm not lonely, am I? Not as bad as I used to be. There's your evidence. So right now, right now, you don't, know. you don't feel lonely. Far from it. Far from it. Far from it. Thank you very much. Uh, we love you.